Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So, we're gonna make this Harlequin hat today. So, any fans of Harlequin out there, get your colors, get your crochet hooks, we got pom-pom makers get some of those too and let's jump right into what I used to make this hat so I use Bernat super value black red true red that's the color and just white and a five millimeter hook because this yarn calls for a five. So we're going to use a five. You're also gonna need a measuring tape. So everything that we wear, um, has to go by measurements in order for obviously each video to be for multiple different sizes. So we're going to talk a bit about um, how we measure the head and I'm going to put up a diagram right now of where you need to measure using a measuring tape and hopefully in inches that would be a little more helpful to follow my video because I work in inches. So um, that's the diagram and that's where you need to measure around for your head measurement. So the um, measurement I'm going to be doing in this video is going to be for a 25 inch head. So now I'm making this for somebody specific and her head was 25 inches, which is a large head. Um, most, um, most heads are 21, 22 inches. Um, a large adult, um, even 23. I, I've never come across a 25 inch head, but, um, <clears throat> so the chart that I'm going to be putting up in this video will show you how high we have to make it and I'll get to that uh, as we go um, I'll be putting this chart up multiple times because there's going to be multiple people doing multiple sizes on my channel so the chart is going to be your source of information to make the size of hat that you need so my head I, I want the hat to be a 24 inch circumference for a 25 inch head. The reason being is because we all know the yarn is going to stretch. So I want to make it a little bit smaller, at least by an inch, um, to give it that room to stretch without it all of a sudden just being too big for the head. So I want to make my hat in 24 inches. But my chain is also going to stretch a little bit. My chain will actually stretch an inch. So I want to make a chain that's 11 inches long. That gives it room because I technically need one that's 12 inches. 12 and 12 is 24. So whatever your head measurement is, knock off an inch and then divide it by two and then knock off another inch. And that'll be how long your chain has to be. So my head is 25, but I'm doing one that's 24, a hat that's 24 inches divided by two is 12, knock off an inch is 11. For me to get 11 inches, I know I have to chain 40. So I'm going to be chaining 40 plus 2. So whatever length you need 
chain it and then plus two because we're going to be working in half double crochets. So using your five millimeter chain the length that you need. I hope I explained that well enough. So I've chained 40. So once you've established the chain, you're going to hold your finger on that last stitch and chain two. You're going to work in half double crochet, so you're going to go into that stitch, that 40th stitch, or whichever number you have. And we're going to start, so this first one will act as a stitch. And that's why we do the chain two. We're making that basically a stitch. So now I just want you to half double crochet all the way back up, and then we'll talk about what we need to do next. So I am back with my first row done. So again, we have to measure. So let's take a look at the chart. Do you see the first three rows that say head circumference, hat length without folded brim and hat length length with folded brim? So if you move across, you'll see preemie, newborn, 3 to 6, 6 to 12, uh, 12 months to 3 years, 3 to 10. You go all the way to the very end, and you'll see women and men. So any of these sizes you can pick. So from preemie to man, 23 to 24 inch head size. So this is in inches. So... The next column down, so I'm I'm going to be in the man column because the person I'm making it for is a 25 inch head, but I'm making the hat for 24 inches. So I'm at the top of the spectrum. So it says that my hat length needs to be nine to nine and a half inches. Well, I think I'm going to do nine inches because I'm going to stay within the same range as the women's hat is nine inches and that's for a 20 to 22 and a half inch head it's still nine inches and I am making it for a woman so I'm going to stay in the nine inch range so we just continue doing what we're doing with however many stitches you have we're going to continue to build until yours is nine inches in length. So this here, not this way, but this way, has to be nine inches tall. So keep building this till you have yours at nine inches. So chain one, turn your work. This here, Pull your slip knot closed and you could probably just weave this in as you go. Now remember to get into this first stitch and the very last turning over stitch so you don't have crooked sides. And you're just going to continue to put one half double crochet in each stitch, chain two and turn till you have 
a nine inch piece. And then I'll meet you right back and we'll continue. Now keep in mind, if you need to write anything down, I would also write it down because you have to make two pieces. So I will see you on the other side. So I am back. I've got my nine inch piece all done. Zoom out a bit here. So I've got nine inches exactly. So I want to mark this last row before we start to, to um, decrease. I just want to mark the last row that I did. We're going to be starting our decreases and um, when we go to sew this together I just want to know where my last row was before I started to decrease. So I would suggest you do the same thing because when we sew them together we got to sew up here and I want to know where to stop so so now that we have our nine inches we can carry on now I'm gonna try to do the best I can with this but our numbers are not going to be the same unless you're making a hat for a 24 inch head <laughs> If you're following my numbers, then I guess they'll be the same. But I'm going to try not to give you numbers. I might accidentally because I'm just so used to doing that. So we're going to start our decreases. We're going to decrease these first two stitches. So a half double decrease as you yarn over and go into your first stitch. Now make sure you're going into... This chain two doesn't count as a stitch. You need to get into your first stitch. So yarn over, go into your first stitch, pull up a loop, pull through two and stop. Yarn over, go into your second stitch, pull through two, and then pull through all three. That's a half double decrease. So now you're going to half double crochet all the way to the end, and you're going to decrease these last two stitches. Now just make sure that you're actually getting into this last stitch. Now this last stitch likes to turn over. So just make sure you're looking for your V's on top. Because I won't be able to give you any numbers because I don't know what size you're doing. So I'm all the way to the other side. Now that's my two stitches left and I'm going to do a, a decrease here. Chain two, turn your work. So your next round, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to do a decrease. Half double crochet all the way to the other side until you have two stitches left and then do another decrease. So I'm all the way around back to the other, or not around back. I've got two stitches left. Just be sure you're counting every row if you're not really familiar with where your stitches are, what's going on. So, same thing. We're going to decrease the first two stitches. We're 
We're going to half double crochet our way to the other side and decrease the last two stitches. So again, I'm at the end with my two stitches left and I'm going to decrease those two stitches. Chain two, turn your work. So we do this for a while, just decreasing every single row. So here I am at the end again, and I'm going to decrease these last two stitches. So I think you have the idea of what we're doing, chain two and turn. So we're on, we're starting round 28. So for seven rows, so that'll take you to round 34. You're just going to keep doing the same thing. You're going to decrease the first two stitches. You're going to decrease the last two stitches and then half double in between for the next seven rows. Now I'm going to put my pause screen up. So once we come back after our seven rows of decreases, things change a little bit. So we're going to, we're going to change things up when we come back. So I will see you after your seven rows of decreases. So I am just coming to the end of my 34th row with my final decrease for now. So that's our seven decrease. This is what you should have. So now we're going to switch things up a little bit, but before we start to switch things up, we're just going to do our 34 row 35 is just going to be one half double crochet in each of these 18 stitch well my sorry mine's 18 I don't know what yours is a half double crochet in each of these stitches whatever one however many you have I'm not used to not giving counts so I have 18 by the way <laughs> that'll be our little secret So, chain two, turn your work. So now we're going to, we're going to continue to do a half double crochet decrease. In between, we're going to be doing just rows of no decreases. So, for example, round 36 is going to be decrease row. So decrease these two. Do your half double crochet across and decrease the last two. So I've got these two stitches left. I'm going to decrease them. Chain two, turn your work. So round 37 and 38 are just simply going to be one half double in each stitch. 
So for the next two rows, you're just going to put one half double crochet in each stitch. Alrighty, chain one and turn your work. So that was my two rows. So round 39 is going to be a decrease row. So decrease the first two. And then half double crochet across and decrease the last two. So I have my two stitches left and I'm going to half double crochet those two together so a decrease. So I have 14 stitches. I don't know how many you have <laughs> but um, yours is probably a lot smaller so you may not have to go as far as me like you may be done now for all I know. But I don't want you to go any less than six stitches across. I want you to at least have six stitches at the top. So if you're already there, you then you need to stop. I, on the other hand, need to keep going because I'm only at 14 stitches. For the next two rows, whoever's still with me, we're just going to do one single crochet in each stitch. So that is my two rows. I'm going to chain two and turn my work. So we're going to decrease some more. And I've got my two stitches left and I'm going to decrease those two. Chain two, turn your work. And for the next two rows, round 43 and 44, I want you to do one half double crochet in whatever stitches you have left. So that's my two rows. I'm going to chain two. I'm going to turn my work. And I'm going to do another decrease. So I'm only at 10, so I need to keep going. So for the next three rows, I'm just going to put one single or one half double crochet in each of these stitches. God, if I've said single crochet anywhere in this video, I apologize. I'm not used to working in half double crochets, so it's just a habit. So that's my three rows. So this is what I have so far. So if you're finding that you did your, I did my nine inches here. If you're finding that you did your head size here and this isn't tapering in where you're getting this long neck um, because yours is probably shorter than mine. If you're making for kids or something, then you're just going to have to start putting single rows in between your decreases down here because down here I just went decrease 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 but if yours is going to be shorter you need this long neck 
So you may want to consider putting single rows in between your decreases just to be able to get this long neck kind of a, a look if yours is, you know, way smaller. So I'm still <laughs> decreasing because mine was huge. So I'm going to just continue um, annoying you with these <laughs> decreases. into turn your work. So this will be the next three rows, round 50 to 52, will be just one half double in each stitch. And I've got eight stitches, so my goal is to have six across, which will be the next round. So one more decrease for me. So that gives me six stitches and I'm going to do three rows of one half double in each of these six stitches and then you can fasten off. So that is my three rows. So it's hard to show you, but this is what I have. <laughs> I'm going to fasten off and then I'll zoom out a bit. So you just need a little weaving tail. We um, crochet this together. We don't sew it together, so we don't need any sewing tails anywhere. We just need little tiny weaving tails. So there's no right or wrong side because we worked on both of them. So you just have to be very polite in your weaving. Because, or just remember which side you weave to make it the inside. So, let me zoom out. Oh gosh, you still can hardly see. So there's my, there's my start of my hat. So now you have to make, hopefully you wrote down what you have to do. How many chains you did and then how many rows you did to get your nine inches or whatever size you're doing. And then of course all your, your decreases. Um, or you can just <laughs> rewind the video and watch it again because you need a black piece. So you need a red piece and you need a black piece to match. So um, go ahead and make your black piece to match your red piece and I'll see you right back here. Okie dokie. So I've got my black and I've got my red piece. And I've got both of them marked with my markers. So now what I need to do, move this up here, is I need to start down here and I need to slip stitch. We're going to use just use our crochet hook for this all the way up to our markers. So that's the for starters. That's the for starters thing to do right now. So this is marked where the last row that we did before we started to decrease. So it doesn't really matter what color you use. I'm just going to use my red. Make a slip knot. Put it on your hook. So pick a 
pick a spot to go in. So this is the raw side and the raw side. There's no stitches over here. So you just have to pick a spot to go in and reattach. Um, I'm slip stitching my way back up. So you basically just stick your hook in anywhere and slip stitch. Just try to keep them fairly close together. Now you can do a single crochet. I just thought a slip stitch would cut down on the bump that you'd have on the inside of your hat that's going to be touching your head. It's almost like stitch for stitch but you don't have stitches. So I'm up to my markers. I'm just going to take them out. And I'm going to continue just to cover those two stitches in this last row. So this was kind of where I started to do my decreases. So I'm just going to put one more stitch in there. And I am going to fasten off. So again, I want to weave this in and then we'll do the other side. Now there's no markers in the other side, but um, you get an idea of where we stopped on this row. So we're going to be turning this hat right side in. So it's okay to weave. So now we do this side. So this is where we stopped. Put a marker right there. And a marker right there. So that's where we stopped. Just following it along and putting my markers in. And now we do the exact same thing on the other side. Slip stitch our way all the way up to our marker. So I'm all the way up this side too. I just gotta weave in my weave in my tail. And these little fellas down here. So now I want you to turn it so it's like that. This is where we did all of our sewing. Now this part we fold in half and we sew or we crochet <laughs> all the way down to here. We're going to meet up and then same with the other side. So you can either start down here and work up or you can start at the top and work down. I'm going to start down here and work my way up. So I'm up at the tippy top and I've got to come across the top too. 
and then I can fasten off. Weave. And then do the same thing on the red side. You can fasten off and then we're done with this part of the hat. Alright, here's the hard part. Turning the hat right side in is the hard part. So all you can do is keep grabbing down this hole and pulling <laughs> little bits at a time until you get it all up. That's about all you can do. It's quite difficult to get your point up. I still have this much to dig up to go when I'm struggling. So that's my point. Now there is going to be a pom-pom on the end of this. So. Just stretch it out a little bit. Relax the stitches. And now for the other side. Now just make sure there's no hole here. There we go. All right. So again, this can just get stretched. Relax these stitches a bit. There. So this is uh, the beginning. Just m make sure your seam is on the inside here because this does like to twist a little bit. So you can just keep tugging on this to relax the stitches. And then let me zoom out. This is what I have right now so that's what it should look like and just because this is so skinny that's why it kind of looks like it tapers in like this but it's straight that's just the way that it's tapering in so you can decide which way you want the front or the back or or what have you but that is our hat so far So, now we have to line this up here so that we can find our middle stitches to start our ear flaps. Let me get a little bit more on camera here. So, fold it in half like it would be sitting on your head. I'm just going to mark this stitch because that's the fold. So I've marked the 20th stitch here and here. 
you can't count the stitches because this is the chain that we made so just count your posts these are your posts so count those or just fold it in half and find your your middle let's do one side at a time two four six seven two four six seven from either side of this will give me 14 half double crochets so I need to reattach in the seventh stitch which puts me four, six, eight, ten, around the thirteenth Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. So here so marker that thirteenth stitch. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Well, that works out perfect. So if you marker, if you do it that way. So, um, I'm going to be working in half double crochets again. I just reattached with a slip stitch, but I'm going to put a half double crochet into that same space. So 14 half doubles, that's what I want you to do. That's my 14 half doubles. You can take this marker out too. You're going to chain one and turn. The reason I'm chaining one is because I'm not using it as a stitch, so it doesn't really matter whether I chain one or chain two, but I'm just chaining one because I'm going to go into a decrease anyway. I'm going to cut this off because I just weaved it all the way over. So I don't need that. So we're going to decrease. And then I'm going to decrease these last two stitches. Chain two. Turn your work. Oh, sorry, chain one. <laughs> I forgot, I'm only chaining one. Turn your work. I want you to decrease these first two stitches. And decrease these last two. Chain one. Turn your work. Decrease these first two stitches.
and decrease the last two. Chain one, turn your work. Should have eight stitches. So I just want you to put one half double in each of these eight stitches. Chain one, turn your work. And we continue to decrease. So decrease these first two stitches. And decrease these last two. Chain one, turn your work. So you're going to decrease these first two. And decrease the last two. Turn one, turn your work. So you're going to start this row off with a half double. And then these next two stitches, you're going to do a S or HTC two tog decrease and then a half double. Chain one, turn your work. And I want you to do three half doubles. That's all the stitches you've got up here. And fasten off. So that is your ear flap, ear flap for this side and now we're going to do the same thing in black. So that's probably an easier way to do it is fold it in half and just kind of Find your right spots there. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. So I'm on my last three half doubles right here at the top. And I'm going to fasten off. Chain one, 
weave this in. There we go. So now that we have our ear flaps done, we can make the little thingies for it. They're not so little. They are not so little. But you will need your white, white, your red, and your black. All right, to start the, let me get the hat out of the way. Let me get the hat out of the way so we can. So let's take our black and we're doing arms length once and cut it. So that's pretty long. Well, it's pretty short for my arms length, but <laughs> it's pretty long. So we just need this one piece because we can just use it as a reference. So we need six of each color. So, that's my six of every color, all three colors. So you just need to separate them. So three white, three red, three black. And pull them apart. So we got one each. Three red, three white. I want you to fold it in half. We're going to make it even. We're going to attach these like um, we would put hair on a doll. So. Find a middle hole. There's one right there. You're gonna grab your all your mess and you're gonna ever so carefully pull it through and bring up a loop. And then you're gonna pull it through. Now you can do this with your fingers. Might be way easier. And grab this and pull it through and then push your knot up to the bottom of your ear flap just like that so we're gonna braid this I'm just pulling down to make sure everything's nice and tight in there. So we're going to braid. So you get your two white, two red, and two black for each 
section. You need three sections to braid with. So each section is two red, two white, two black. And then you proceed to braid. So if you don't know how to braid, um, everything just kind of goes over this middle piece. So we're going to go over the middle piece. So now the middle piece is over here. And this becomes the middle piece. And then we go over. We make that the middle. And pull this over here. And now this is the middle piece. So that's all we're doing. I'm going to do mine pretty loose. So that I've got big braids. But you can do whatever you want with yours. And we're going to braid as far as we can. So once you've got a little bit left, we're going to have to take all of this and make a knot. So I'll just make sure you pull the knot down to the bottom of your braid. Make sure everything's tight. And then we can snip off. I always like to leave a little bit on the bottom like that. And now we do the same thing with the other side. Okie dokie, so I got both mine done. So that takes care of our ear flaps. And now, let me turn this over. I like this side better. So now we just need to do the pom poms for the ends. So if you got pom pom makers, then that's fabulous. Um, if not, grab your weight and I'll meet you right back here. So, I got my weight and I've got a case to make pom-poms with. I was hoping it's big enough. So first things first, we need to cut off a piece here. And this piece is going to lay down just like that. And then we're going to take this and we're going to wrap a lot because we need this to be a big pom-pom and be able to cut it down to being a smaller pom-pom. The shorter you cut a pom-pom that you make like this, the shorter you cut it, the furrier it gets. So we kind of want it to be a nice looking pom-pom. So I've got a bit of white <laughs> on here. <coughs> I'm going to cut it off here. And I'm going to pull this off. And then I'm going to tie really tight so 
So you want to make sure you have ends because we need to sew this to the hat. So make sure these ends are fairly decently long for sewing. Get everything out of my way here. I'm gonna make a mess, so I might as well make a mess on my on my thing that I can just move and dump. So all these loops. You're gonna get your scissors in there and you're gonna cut. I'm gonna hold on to my strings, first my sewing strings. So I'm gonna cut all my loops. There might be some that you miss, but in the trimming process, you could pro you probably will get them. So, both sides. Now you're thinking this is a ginormous pom-pom, but um, it is, but it won't be because we're gonna we're gonna cut it significantly down, and um, you're gonna see that the shorter we go, the furrier it gets, and that's why I say if you miss any loops, you're probably gonna get it in this trimming process. So I think that's good enough for me. That looks like the pom pom in the picture that I was sent. So I was sent a picture of this Harlequin hat and asked to do it for my niece. So that looks like the pom pom in the picture. So now we just got to match, make pom pom number two. All right, I got my pom-poms done. If my camera wants, there we go. So I got my pom-poms done. I think they're the same size. <laughs> they're close. So. So I kind of got to go right in the end, so to speak. I'll pop out of one of these holes. I'll pop out the same hole, but don't go in the same hole. So I'm going to go in right next to it, but not the same hole. But I want to pop out B in the same hole over here. So... This I'm going to tie in a tight single knot that will bring that pom-pom right up. And you can put your double knot in there. And some people would think that that was fine, but I'm going to do it again. <laughs> because I don't want anything to happen 
So go back down the same hole and pop out another hole if you're doing it again like me. For safety reasons. And then do it again. Go back down the same hole and then pop out wherever. And that's just us weaving. We're not going to do it a third time. <laughs> I'm not that bad. So that's one pom pom. I think these pieces might be a little too short to do all that on this one, but I'm certainly going to try. There, pom pom number two. There, our hat is done. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. So, <laughs> it's still hard to get in. So, there is our um, Harlequin hat. Almost like a Joker hat. But is that kind of what she's supposed to be? I don't know. I've never seen it. Anyway, I hope yours turned out as great as mine turned out. Thanks for joining me, guys. I will see you in the next video.